Welcome to the Exodoku training video number 66. In this video, we will discuss the extreme puzzle solving technique called XY chain. This video has three prerequisite videos. First, you should watch the Exodoku training video number 55, titled Types of Sudoku Links. Second, you should watch the Exodoku training video number 41, titled X chain puzzle solving technique. And third, you should watch the Exodoku training video number 33, titled Remote Pair puzzle solving technique. The XY chain puzzle solving technique is an extreme technique. Extreme techniques are harder to learn and they are harder to execute within a puzzle. It will require a greater level of patience and persistence compared to easier level techniques. There are four types of XY chains. In this video, type 1 will be demonstrated. In the XY chain part 2 video, types 2, 3, and 4 will be demonstrated. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. We begin by highlighting all the cells having exactly two possible candidates. Cells having two possible candidates are called bivalue cells. All the bivalue cells are now highlighted in green. The correct word is bivalued, spelled with an ending D, but it's too hard to say. Notice on the left we have the XY chain search algorithm. We add the first step in our algorithm into the window. Also notice the logging window on the right. We will keep track of each step as we search for XY chains. The next step in the algorithm is for each bivalue cell, for each number in each bivalue cell, we choose a starting cell candidate. We begin with the number two in cell one comma one as our starting point. We highlight the starting cell in a darker green. And the starting candidate of our chaining sequence is highlighted in purple. We log the starting cell and starting cell candidate in our logging window as shown. In the log, we use two dash to indicate the number two is the starting candidate in the chaining sequence, followed by the cell location. Next, we make sure there is a way to leave the starting cell for our chaining sequence. As you can see, the current cell passes the test in two different ways. We update our algorithm to include this next step. We also update our log. This step is useful in preventing us from wasting any time with cells having no way to start chaining. The next step in the algorithm is to search every bivalue cell looking for potential N cells. We update our algorithm with the next step and we update our log. We begin searching for potential ending cells. Each potential bivalue ending cell must have the starting candidate in it. Also, for a cell to be considered a potential ending cell, it must have target candidates to kill in its kill zone. The kill zone is defined by all cells visible to the starting and ending cell. As you can see, the starting cell ending cell combination has a kill zone with target candidates. So we can color the cell background purple for cell 2, 9 to indicate that it is a possible ending cell in our chaining sequence. The XY chain has four types of kill zones. We continue searching. This time, for the starting cell ending cell combination, there are no target candidates to kill in our kill zone. Here is the second type of kill zone with the XY chain. Notice how this kill zone is only composed of two cells highlighted in red. Since there are no targets, we do not color the cell background in purple. Instead, we continue searching. Here is another six cell type kill zone with target candidates. We continue searching. Here's a two cell type kill zone, but this time it has target candidates. We continue searching. Another two cell kill zone with no target candidates. Here is the starting cell ending cell combination with the less common seven cell type kill zone, but with no target candidates to kill. Here, this is the case when both the starting cell and ending cell are in the same house and another kill zone of the two cell type with one target candidate. Our search for potential ending cells is now complete. The next step in our algorithm is to weed out all the potential ending cells not having a chaining path into the cell. We start with cell 7, 3. This cell has two ways in for a chaining path as shown. We move to cell 8, 4. This cell also has a way in now being shown. But now we look at cell 2, 9. There is no way to chain into this cell with the possible 5 candidate. So we remove cell 2, 9 from our set of possible ending cells for our chaining sequence since there is no way in. 
we change the color from purple to back to green. Next we look at cell 9,6. This has no path into the cell for the possible 6 candidate. So we remove cell 9,6 from our set of possible ending cells. We are now ready to begin chaining. The way out of the first cell testing and the way into the last cell testing is a great time saver when looking for XY chains. Also, searching for a chaining sequence that might end up at any of the ending cells all at once also saves time. The algorithm has been updated for the next step. Here is the first chain in our sequence. We have a strong link from the 2 in cell 1, 1 to the 3 in cell 1, 1. We use the notation equal sign number equal sign to indicate a strong link in our log. The dash number dash indicates a weak link. Normally, we do not include the first cell in the log notation. Instead, we use this notation. We just have a link followed by an ending cell. The starting cell comes from a previous line in the log. This line is read as we had a strong link with the possible 3 candidate ending up in cell 1, 1. We add the next two links in our chaining sequence. We have a weak link with the number 3 to cell 3, 3, and then we have a strong link between the 3 and 2 within cell 3, 3. But now we have a problem. The number 2 in cell 3, 3 has the same chaining color as the 2 in our ending cell at 7, 3. We call this bad polarity. When bad polarity occurs with an ending cell, the ending cell becomes disqualified. We update our algorithm with the bad polarity rule. We add the next two links to our chaining sequence. We add the next two links to our chaining sequence. We add the next two links to our chaining sequence. We are now at a dead end with our chaining path. From the 6th candidate in cell 9,6, there are no bivalue cells we can use for the next link in our chain. At this point, we reset to the next possible subbranch in our chaining sequence. If there are no subbranches, we reset to the next starting cell candidate. We update our algorithm with this new rule. We reset back to the starting cell and try a new path for our chaining sequence. And we have the same result as the first path. There are no more subbranches left to reset back to with our current starting cell candidate, so we reset back to the next starting cell candidate. We are now looking for a chaining sequence starting with the number 3 in cell 1, 1. Our starting cell candidate passes the leave on X test, now indicated in the log. We have two possible ending cells, and the two kill zones are highlighted with target candidates. We update the log. The first ending cell is eliminated by bad polarity, and the second ending cell is also eliminated by bad polarity. We reset to the next starting cell candidate, which is the number 4 in the cell 1, 5 now highlighted. Except this cell fails the leave on X test. There is no way to leave the cell with a chaining sequence using the number 6. We reset or move on to the next starting cell candidate, which is now the 6 in cell 1, 5. This time we pass the leave on X test with two ways out on the possible 4 candidate in cell 1, 5. We search for potential ending cells. We find one cell now highlighted in purple and it passes the come in on Y test. We try forming an X chain on the first path out of cell 1, 5, but this comes to a dead end in cell 3, 5 as shown. However, the second path out of cell 1, 5 is a winner. We now have a completed XY chain sequence between the starting cell candidate and the ending cell as shown. Before we remove the non-possible candidates in our kill zone, let's review the logic for how the XY chain works. We have two scenarios to consider with our starting cell. First, we have a value of 6 in cell 1, 5 now shown in red. Having a value of 6 in cell 1, 5 would kill all the target candidates in our kill zone. The second scenario to consider, and the more interesting one, is when we have a value of 4 in cell 1, 5. If we have a 4 in cell 1, 5, then it forces a 9 in cell 6, 5 as shown. And if we have a 9 in cell 6, 5, it then forces a 2 in cell 6, 7. This then forces a 5 in cell 8, 7 as shown. Having a 5 in cell 8, 7 then forces a 2 in cell 8, 4. This then forces a 6 in our ending cell at 9,6 as shown. 
Having a 6 in cell 9, 6 results in all our target candidates in our kill zone being killed. As you can see, both scenarios result in our target candidates in our kill zone being killed, so we must conclude our target candidates are non-possible candidates. In this example, we show detailed logging. When I am looking for XY chains in the wild, I do not do any logging at all. I use Hadoku just to color the starting cell and ending cells as currently being shown. This is so I do not lose track of the starting and ending cells while I'm looking for the chaining sequence. I then just use one candidate chaining color to find the chaining path as shown. This is a much faster way for finding XY chains in the wild after you've mastered the technique. Here is the kill zone again for this XY chain. Notice how this XY chain has a kill zone composed of six cells. There are four types of XY chains. In this video, we showed you an XY chain having a kill zone composed of six cells. In the XY chain video part two, we will cover the other three types. Type two has two cells in the kill zone. Type three has seven cells in the kill zone. And type four, which is very rare, has 13 cells in the kill zone. We update our XY chaining algorithm one more time. We remove the non-possible candidates from our puzzle. This completes the Exodoku training video number 66. Please support the Exodoku. Thank you for watching.